DJ Welcome again to Ideas at Work and Beyond. I know this isn't supposed to be a commercial show. This is, what do they call it, public access, so public you can't access. really endorse an enterprise or anything like that. But I can tell you that tonight I had dinner at Two Steps. Oh. It's over there, and this is not an endorsement, but all I can say is it was a very fine restaurant. What did you have? Yeah, the cheeseburger was very good, and they had chicken wings. It was very, very good. Although, I really can't mention the name, which is Two Steps, because this isn't a commercial uh, entity. <laughs> Wait, the manager, she's pulling the plug. Yeah. Just stop that. Okay, welcome again. Take two. This isn't live, is it? Yeah. I think it is. Okay, forget everything I said. Welcome again to Ideas of Work and Beyond. Yeah, Mike, Mike. Tip O'Neill. Tip O'Neill, which some of you youngsters might not remember, but Tip O'Neill and Ronald Reagan kind of ran this country. Tip O'Neill for the Democrats, Ronald Reagan for the Republicans, pretty much during the 1980s. And Tip O'Neill once said that all politics is local, Absolutely. local politics. So this evening we're going to have a show called focus on Danbury and the surrounding region because Bethel comes into play. Absolutely. I have it on, on, on a good word that possibly the first selectman of Bethel might be calling in the Honorable Robert Burke. Bob Burke calling Bob in. Bob Burke may be calling in. Oh uh, he's been running Bethel since 5 this morning. He's a bit tired, but he could be calling the studio line, and that okay. studio line is 792-4101, 792-4101. And this evening, as has become our habit, we have the illustrious, the much feared founder and editor of Hat City Blog, Al Robinson, will be joining us. How are you? Thank you very much for joining us. All right. And you have something where we're talking about a, a water tower or something like that that's coming in on the Bethel Danbury line, and there's some debate. What's yeah, going on with that? Well, you know what's going on here is that um, there's a lot of issues that are happening in the Danbury area. One of the mm -hmm. things I like to talk about on my blog, which, by the way, this Sunday will be four years of Hat City Blog. Four years of Hat City Blog. Four years of Hat City Blog. That's incredible. Fear into the greater, the greater Danbury area. And by the Absolutely. way, that's one of the longest running blogs covering local politics in the state of Connecticut. So, wow. Impressive. Impressive. All right. So, um, a lot of stuff that I like to keep an eye on. I, I think that politics in terms of like common council or selectman meetings is one mm -hmm. thing, but if you really want to know about what's happening in terms of the makeup of your city or of your town, you follow the stuff that's happening in planning and zoning commission yeah. meetings. Yeah, because, that's uh, true. You know, with zoning, you know, they carve up the, the, make, the, the layout of the city and mm -hmm. planning decides what types of developments go into your city. So, Absolutely. You know, so you I mean, some of it, to be honest with you, is a little mundane, right. a little dry, but you've uh, got some film clips this evening of various planning and zoning meetings and some issues that have come up. Right, so um, the one thing we want to talk about, there's a, a proposed water tank tower that mm -hmm. was supposed to be placed on Long Ridge Road. So let's, let me go back a little bit. Okay. Um, between Bessel and Danbury, the, the town of Bessel actually owns property mm -hmm. or land in Danbury. So. Um, have they owned that land since the 1800s? I don't know how long they've owned it. It's, it's, Danbury and Bessel's kind of weird. You know, Danbury owns land in Bessel, Bessel owns land in Danbury. I don't really know why. It doesn't okay. really make a whole lot of sense to me. But I know that the town of Bessel wanted to place a water tower off of Long Ridge Road. Mm -hmm. um, and this needed to go through the planning department of the city of Danbury since it's being placed in the city of Danbury, which will be the water will be used for the people in the town of Bessel. Okay. Now, um, this was a pretty important thing for the town of Bessel because they actually had some Obama money 
that could be used to get this project through. It's now, when Obama. you say Obama money, you mean the federal tax dollars that have been taken this from was, taxpayers in this country this was, and are now being used as a stimulus well, package? Well, uh, let's, let's, uh, if we This could, isn't if Barack we, Obama's money. He doesn't open up his wallet and hand it no, to the people of no, Bethel well, to go build a water tower. I'm sure the town of Ridgefield has got their hands open also. But, we do. Okay. We have <laughs> shovel-ready projects That's of exactly what this is. This is one of these shovel-ready projects. We'd love to have projects. a little Obama money, I'm but go sure ahead. The Obama bucks. This is one of those shovel-ready projects mm -hmm. that is uh, that is lined up for federal stimulus money. Mm -hmm. So this needs to go through the Planning Commission. And what happened was is that um, members of the, the, the neighborhood right. were in somewhat opposition towards this tower being placed at this particular location for a variety of reasons. What does NIMBY stand for? NIMBY means is the... Um, not cold, in not my, my backyard. backyard. NIMBY, NIMBY, NIMBY. NIMBY, okay. NIMBY people. Uh, I, I, I'm not going to call people in that area, NIMBY, and that's not me saying that, but mm -hmm. um, some of the reasons that, some of the concerns that they had about this tower are, in my opinion, somewhat legit. Mm -hmm. um, the town of Bessel presented a plan in which they said we, we'd have to tear down some trees in, in, in that area. Now, when you say a tower, how high is this tower? Um, the tower is going to be coming out of the ground, I think, anywhere between 12 to 14 feet. Mm -hmm. But there's a little misconception, and, and, and this will go back to after we show the video. I can okay. come back to it. But, you know, some people say it's 55 feet, but in actuality, um, it's 50, I think what people are saying is 55 feet from the base of Long Ridge Road to the apex. Okay. But we have well, yeah, we have, we have. Uh, First Selectman Burt? Yes. Thank you so great. much for calling in. Uh, we're talking about the uh, uh, water tank slash tower that's going to be uh, possibly going up on the piece of property that you own. If you could, just walk us through uh, what the plan is. Sure, Marty. Uh, you and Mr. Robinson, thank you. Mr. Robinson is yes. correct to a degree, but there's there's no Obama money in here. Okay. This is a plan that's been handled in Bethel for over the last couple of years. Uh, we have a grant from the uh, uh, Department of Health and Water Safety uh, that has been acquired, and we will match that with either a bond issue, a, a low-interest loan that's available through the state of Connecticut, what this is about is is need number one the pressure fire protection. We have owned this continuous land from the Terre Haute property, Mountain Pond Reservoir, the Eureka Reservoir, and it has been in existence and owned by the town of Bethel since the 1880s. That's when the Eureka Reservoir system and the Bethel water system was poured into the world. Uh, it, it's extremely important for health, for public safety, and, and fire protection in the town of Bethel. This is about a 600 foot above sea level height. And we need the height, and, and we've paid our taxes to Danbury since the 1880s. This, he, he, uh, Mr. Robinson is completely correct. The, the, this is well set back from the road. The roof on this is a maximum of 14 feet. It's not Long Ridge Road. It's Mountainville Avenue, actually, where it goes up into. Long Ridge starts farther down and runs to the back of the Terra Wild property. Okay. Uh, it, it will not even be seen from the road. And if you drive up Mountainville into Long Ridge, you will find that there are houses that sit back in the woods that have ridge lines on their roofs of 22 to 26 feet. Okay. Most of your ranch houses that are uh, within the area of this tank situation... Uh, are anywhere from 12 to 16 feet. Uh, first segment, Burke, it's where, going where, to be, where it's is going to be a three-quarter million gallon tank, but it's buried for the most part. Where does the issue stand right now? If, if uh, the citizens... Danbury has denied Bethel the opportunity to build. Uh, they had uh, 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 four members of their planning and zoning commission that were present out of a five-member board, and they unanimously, four to nothing, voted against the acceptance of this. Now, we, we have, and we'll be able to show, um, I don't know if we can have Mr. Burke on after the video is done, but we actually attended the planning commission meeting where the, the decision was dropped down, and I'll be able to show to the audience oh, yeah. the, the actual video footage of the denial and the reasons behind the denial from the members of the commission that were present there. I actually yeah. think, if I'm and correct, I think there's five people if there. If I may say this, yes. 
Go ahead, Mr. Yes. Burke. Go this ahead. This is the way the democratic process works. And, of course, it's going to be respected. But I can't move my reservoirs. That is the spot there. Our reservoirs and our water supply is carried from. We pump from our well system to, uh, to our, 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 uh, our clear wells at the Eureka site where our treatment plant is. So we get pressure now. And it's imperative that we get more pressure. The development that's come in Bethel over the last 10 years, and, and we have another oh, approximately 350 units that will be constructed in the next three years in Bethel. We need this for fire protection. We need the pressure in case, God forbid, we have a fire. And we just last Sunday had a bad fire on um, uh, the Hudson Street condominium yes, yeah. uh, um on the Bethel Danbury line. Now, uh, I mean, I, it's in Bethel, but we lost two units, and, and we had two other units affected. Now, I, I don't think, um, and, and, and again, I, I attended the meeting, and we'll be able to show to the audience the uh, the video footage of what was said at the meeting. I don't think, um, based upon my knowledge of attending the meeting, that uh, the rationale behind denying the, 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 the um, proposal was based upon, you know, hey, we don't want to give Bethel this thing. I, I think it had more to do with aesthetics, with the placement, the trees, and I think if the tank was actually moved back a little bit, I think this all can be worked out. But again, I'll let the members of the audience watch the video footage of the meeting. And, and we're looking into that, that where we are now, Mr. Robinson, yeah. is we are looking in that direction to find out where we can accommodate. But, but it's imperative that we remain on the same level as our clear wells at the Eureka Reservoir. And there's not that much room in that area. We may be able to push it back a few more feet. Yeah, and I, I And we're willing to do that. We want to be good neighbors. We've existed up there since 1880, and we've been very respectful. And I think I think the, the planning commission actually reflected that in their in their decision. I think in some of their uh, the rationale behind them denying this, uh, particularly with the pine trees and the location of it. I think if it was moved back a little bit, and I think um, you'll have an opportunity to see the video, which we'll show in a couple of minutes. You, you, you can see that I think this can be worked out between the town, uh, uh, the town of Bethel and Danbury, and I hope it will be worked out. Well, it, it, it's the imperative thing. that Bethel... I, well, I, just, I just don't think this is something that would have to go to a court level. I think this, this is something that can be worked out between the two towns. Oh, and that's what we're going to try to do. I mean, well, we're at that point. We're trying to cooperate and work. We went, we applied. In actuality, we really didn't even have to apply to the planning and zoning situation in Danbury. We did that out of great respect for our, our big sister, Danbury. Well, Bethel, until 1855, was part of Danbury. Right. And again, like, like, and like I said earlier, there, there's water tanks that the city of Danbury has in Bethel. It goes both ways, so this is not like a, a big controversy or anything here. But um, for the viewing public, I yeah. think if we have an opportunity right now, if, if we can have you stay on the line or you can watch the video on, on TV. Uh, no, I'll, I'll, I'll kind of stick here. I, I, don't, I, I have you on television, Mr. Robinson, yes. but I, I don't have the sound on me. I'm hearing oh. it, and it's very well, low on my phone. Well, I don't know gonna, how well you hear me. Well, what we're going to do right now is we're going to run the video from the Planning Commission meeting right now, and if you want, you can call back after the video is done. But we also have the response from um, the utilities utility commission meeting from Bethel and your response to it but for right now if the people in the background can run that footage this right now is the video footage from the planning commission and their decision on the water tank proposal so let's run the video please <laughs> Okay, we'll resume our meeting and we will proceed to our old business for consideration possible action agenda. For water storage facility, Eureka Lake water storage tank in the RA80 zone, 37 Long Ridge Road, J20026, special exception 681. The hearing in this match closed June the 3rd of 09. First 65 days will be up on August the 6th of 09. Um, before we proceed into this matter, um, at the last meeting there was a, um, a small amount of uh, discussion, uh, maybe a little confusion over and above our 
normal level of confusion about uh, certain things, uh, uh, voting uh, protocols, uh, staff roles, um, etc. So I thought it might be a good idea before we start our discussion of this matter to uh, introduce Sharon Colitro, give us a brief refresher on the I issue of uh, the staff, the role of the um, Planning Commission staff roles, and a little bit more about the voting requirements. If you'd fire away, Sharon. Surely, thank you. Um, I'm going to read into the record and then I'll compare um, by staff. Dated July 1st uh, to Arnie, Arnold E. and all the junior chairman of the City of Danbury Planning Commission for the planning staff regarding special exceptions, planning commission votes, and staff roles. Let us clarify voting procedures and staff reviews for special exceptions, which includes the petition from the town of Bethel for the proposed Eureka Lake water storage tank, among others. This is not new material, but rather a review of known voting requirements and established staff roles. Number one, voting scenarios. A motion to approve. A motion to approve requires a clear majority vote of seated members to pass. A tie vote or a negative vote defeats the motion and the petition is denied. A motion to deny. A motion to deny the petition requires a clear majority vote of seated members to pass. A tie vote or a negative vote defeats the motion, but the petition is still active because the commission has simply denied the denial. It doesn't mean that the commission has approved or denied the petition. That requires, within prescribed time limits, a subsequent vote on a motion to approve. Without, without it, the petition passes because the commission has not take, taken action on it. Number two, special exceptions. There are two considerations when a special exception comes before the commission. First, it must vote to approve or deny the petition for the special exception. Second, if it votes to approve the special exception, the motion must also include an approval or an approval with conditions of the accompanying site plan. If it votes to deny the special exception, additional action on the site plan is unnecessary since the use is not allowed, regardless of the degree to which it meets site plan requirements of the regulations. Number three, staff review of special exceptions. When a petition for a special exception is received by the commission, staff reviews the site plan for compliance with zoning requirements and reports to the commission on our findings. That process may also include staff consultation with the applicant to ensure that they fully understand the zoning requirements and concerns expressed by the commissioners. A substantially positive site plan review should not be construed as a recommendation by staff to approve the petition for a special exception. That requires further consideration by the commission of the four conditions expressed in section 10C 4A. While staff may assist the commission on these matters, it should be understood that the conditions give the commission a degree of discretion in determ determining compliance that is not enjoyed by staff. In some instances, the commission may find that even though the petition meets all the site plan requirements and the regulations, the use is not suitable for the proposed location because it would create nuisances, land use conflicts, traffic problems, or environmental issues at expressed in 10C 4N. But such a, de uh, excuse me, such a determination must be based on findings in the record and cannot be arbitrary, capricious, or reasonable. Thank you, Sharon. Any questions, Commission members? Mr. Urice. Uh, as you mentioned, there was quite a bit of discussion about this application uh, at the last meeting. And, uh, you know, there was a lot of pension uh, expression on both directions. You, you can hear me all right on this, Joanne? Am I close enough then? Okay. Uh, Doesn't seem like they're okay. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Uh, since the last meeting, I've made trips out to two tanks here in town. Uh, one that's getting ready to go online off the reserve. In fact, I actually got a nice little tour of some of the inner workings of that tank. Uh, one over at um, Terry Wild and two site visits to the uh, uh, applicant area under question here. And the more 
time I spent at this area over on Long Ridge Road and looked at the distances of where they're clearing three lines and looking what is left and what kind of vegetation is there. Um, what, what you see is it's a deciduous forest. There's really not evergreens there. Uh, if there are, I mean, they're far and few between, or you know, some specimen trees that neighbors have planted in the yard, or something like that. But by and large, it's an, it's, it's an, an oak and birch and maple forest, and it's really very pristine. As you go down the road, you see nothing except houses and virgin timber. That's it. Um, looking at the distance of, of what they're going to cut out, clear cut from the center of that tank, they're going to clear cut from 65 feet out to almost look like 80 feet according to my disco meter. And it was going to leave a very thin amount of uh, mature forest between the roadway and the clear cut. And even if you, what, what's, we have to look at this for the applications of the forest, and even if you put, let's say, a double row of uh, evergreens in front of that tank, um, I, I don't see that in any way it's really going to hide the tank, but even beyond that, it would be an unnatural change in the scenery. I mean, it would just, for that area, it would destroy the natural, pristine nature of that neighborhood. Uh, and well, well, I'm just it, talking first. Let, let me let him, well, since he's already started, let me let him finish, and then we'll... Yes, motion first, then discussion, I got you. Go ahead, Joel. No, I'm just making a comment. That's okay. Uh, you're right, then. Yeah. Um, and, and, and it just doesn't seem to me that it would meet the way the application stands today. And that's not saying they can change it at some future point and bring it back and it might be okay, but I think as the application stands today, it just does not meet the contract, uh, the, uh, the requirements of 10C4A subsection 2, being designed in a manner that's compatible with the character of the neighborhood. So, based on those observations, and that, that's my primary concern, it's not one of traffic safety or health safety, uh, it's certainly not uh, uh, something that I think would create an you know, environmental issue per se, but subsection 2, I just don't think it needs a criteria. As such, I'm going to make a motion. We have a draft denial before us that's been presented to the commission. I'm going to make a motion that we deny this application on its merits as per the draft denial before us. Motion made by your second. I'll second that. The, mo the, the motion has been made by Mr. Urice and seconded by Mr. Manuel. Before we proceed, I just want to make sure who is eligible to vote on this matter. Um, my under Okay. Everybody but Ken. You got <laughs> that nice and quick. Thank you, Joanne. Okay. Um, no, that's okay. I just wanted to confirm that. And uh, again, uh, there has been a motion made by Ms. Hewitt, and I, my apologies if we followed Robert's rules of order strictly, we would have had the motion first and then the discussion. Joel made his comments first and then made the motion. No problem. We, we... That's not to say I don't have discussion. No, absolutely not. So, we're going to have, okay, okay. You see, you, you, you throw off the whole meeting here, Dennis. Okay, we have had a motion and a second. Discussion. Commission members. Well, I'll just want to say that uh, although at the last meeting I kind of indicated that I was prepared to pursue this, I, I have indeed changed my mind about what Senator Jerkson has done. <laughs> and, uh, you know, every time I drive by there and I just look at the pictures and I see how big this is going to be, it's just going to be a very, very big structure. And it's not going to be easy to hide. And I'm just, I think that the, in view of the fact that they have so much other property, that there's got to be a way of moving it further away from the road. Thank you, Mr. Manuel. I also... Helen, far away. Sorry. I also um, agree with uh, what's been stated and what I stated, and agrees with what I stated last meeting, uh, in that, um, you know, item two is designed in a manner which is not compatible with the character of the neighborhood is, um, is, is, is definitely in order here. And also I worry about property values dropping as well. 
Thank you, Helen. Um, yeah, I, um, I myself uh, made a visit not to the tank at Terrywild, but to the tank uh, up in Rivington or, or the reserve. And um, I agree with Mr. Urice to the extent that it, it didn't look so bad on the uh, on the map, and maybe even in this photograph it doesn't look so bad. But but when you actually walk right up to it, you can get a feel for the. Uh, the size and, and magnitude of the uh, of the tank, and even though the one up in Rivington is significantly taller than the one proposed for Long Ridge Road, um, the radius isn't that much different. I believe the radius uh, for the one up in Rivington slash the reserve is maybe five or six feet wider than the one proposed for Long Ridge Road. So it is a, it is a, a very very large uh, uh, structure, and I just think that um, the idea that it can be effectively hidden or screened uh, as proposed by the applicant is maybe a little uh, optimistic. Uh, I would also remind the commission members that, um, that the public hearing, uh, we, we were sort of compelled to review this application as per the public hearing, and um, I believe the applicant's offer was a double row of staggered, was it pine trees? Uh, Jennifer, forgive me, I can't recall. But... Mr. Chairman, it was a mixture of deciduous and evergreen trees. Okay. D double row double staggered. staggered. And um, as Joel said, when you, when you take into consideration the disruption and the amount of uh, clear cut and clearing that has to be done, I, I just don't think they'll provide an adequate, an adequate screening. So you've got sort of the, the needs and, and the uh, uh, desires of a public utility superimposed on a scenic neighborhood, and, and um, it, just, it just didn't work for me either. Uh, so I'm in agreement with the comments made by my fellow commissioners. Um, is there anything else, commission members? Um, again, let's make sure we have our, our information and our protocols straight here. We have a draft resolution of denial a motion has been made to deny the application. So as I call the roll, remember, a yes vote means denial. So a yes means no, or we, we say that but uh, kiddingly, but that's exactly what goes on here. So the motion to approve the draft resolution of denial has been made and seconded. Um, just so there can't be any confusion, I will call the roll. And again, a yes means in favor of the denial. Mr. Urice? Yes. Mr. Manuel? Yes. Uh, Ms. Hofstetter? Yes. And Arnold Finaldi votes yes. It is uh, four yeses and zero noes. So the draft resolution of denial is approved. Thank you, Commission members. And thank you, Sharon, for clarifying the uh, protocols and the, and the roles of staff in this matter. We have it. The Danbury Planning Commission that uh, voted down the request to put in that water tank. Uh, we still have first selectman Bob Burke from Bethel. Uh, Bob, you got to watch that. What were your thoughts? Well, I, I can understand why they did it. I'd like to make this comment. For 130 years, that area has stayed pristine because Bethel's kept it that way. We were there first, and Bethel owns approximately 350 acres up there, both sides of the road in spots. The mountain pond flows into the Eureka Reservoir. We have our, our, uh, our clear well up there and we do have our water treatment plant up there. And then we have an additional 208 acres that pumps into the, the mountain pond reserve that is part of the Terre Haute Reserve that then carries to another 288 acres still all undeveloped in Bethel, and, and we kind of like it that way. We, we, we have respected our neighbors in Danbury. We will continue to do that. We allow hunting on our property up there. We allow hiking and, and, and tremendous recreational use. We get a little upset with a few mountain bikes and stuff like that. Not mountain bikes, but, you know, uh, ATVs, that, that, you know, because that kind of chews up your land a little bit. But, uh, you know, we, we allow people to use it. We allow uh, the Sierra Club up there. And, 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 uh, uh, first of all, Bert, what, what time did you get up this morning and did you start working running the town of Bethel? <laughs> Probably about 5.30, Marty. 5.30. Well, listen, I really appreciate you coming on, shedding some light on this. And I think, uh, like Al Robinson said, the two cities can probably get together and, 
come up with a compromise that works best for both. Oh, absolutely. And we were, we're, we're working in that direction. I mean, we own the land, but we certainly respect the laws and regulations of our neighbors. Great. And, and we insist that they expect, respect our laws and regulations, and we try to work with each other. We, I, I like I'm feeling the love. Are you feeling the, the love? couple of years that love. Bethel and Danbury have worked out some sewer connections and some water connections. Our Worcester Street uh, uh, area is, is in an interconnection situation. Uh, about to to be that we've agreed upon and we will have with Danbury for their tower up on Shelter Rock. Yeah, you, you, Just I, I, absolutely visible and sticks up in the air about 35 feet, <laughs> you know. And But we're fine with that because we understand this. We understand we need water. We need fire protection. It's for the health, safety, and welfare of our community. Right, right. Okay. And a, as we grow... The, the, uh, you have a water connection happening as we're speaking from Newtown clear up to New Milford. The United Water has, is about to complete the purchase of the Bethel Water uh, system, that, that uh, Bethel United, and that will give a continuous link with Danbury to Newtown clear up to New Milford through Brookfield. Well, and, and all important for not only fire safety, but water. Well, thank you very much. Me on, and uh, my eyes are getting heavy. Uh, thanks a lot. I really appreciate you taking that time to come on. Thank you. Hey, you guys do a tremendous service for this area. Thank you. Right. Right. <laughs> oh, sorry, no. I shouldn't have cut him off. He was complimenting no. us. That was too bad. We could have gone. I think it was. I think it was both of us. Really. No, I think it was me. That's why you cut him off. I think it was mainly me. Well, but, okay. Okay. Um, that was uh, first selectman Burke. I will say that we did. Uh, I did speak earlier with uh, some highly placed sources in the mayor's office, Mayor Ooh. Mark Bowden, and uh, <laughs> there is another side to this story, and it really does come down to the residents that are there, and they're concerned about their quality of life and what this this tank would mean to them. And, so and again, like I said before, I, I think a lot of if you people who watch the uh, video, you can hear that in some of the comments from the planning commission. It had to do, do with aesthetics where the tank was placed at, the pine trees that was going to be uh, replacing the trees that are naturally there it would kind of mess up the makeup of the land. Yeah. To make a long story short, just move the tank back a little bit. I think everything will be fine. I think uh -huh. we, we don't need to go to court over stuff like this. Yeah. Because, again, it's about water, it's about fire and safety, which... You know, it's essential to, uh, to the area. So. Uh, um, we're going to take a break, and when we come back, there's a, there's a riveting article because a, a, uh, a guest on this show who was sitting right here in our presence, former United States congressman, former uh, state representative, former CIA agent. It's almost as if uh, Andy Griffith met James Bond in the person of former congressman Rob Simmons. <laughs> Apparently, if this... Uh, article by Chris Powell in the uh, in the Danbury News Times is to be uh, under uh, to be believed. The state Democrats <laughs> fret over Simmons, just Rob just Simmons. I'll just uh, <laughs> the Democrats' greater fear of Simmons, who, having served ten years in the State House of Representatives, six years in the U.S. House, has far more experience and renown than Foley, this other guy, this rich guy from Greenwich, that might be running. Oh, so, according to this, Senator Dodd is uh, packing up his office because Rob Simmons will be the new United States Senator. Well, I can't wait to come back from this break. But more on that, we're going to take a break. We're going to have uh, news and weather, and then when we come back, uh, also we'll welcome your calls, 792-4101. But now to the news and weather, and you're going to like the weather. the studios of Comcast Channel 23, this is a news update with anchors Austin Greenfield and Jim Masters. The latest news, sports and weather from around the entire greater Danbury region. And now, Austin Greenfield and Jim Masters. Hello, everyone, and welcome to tonight's edition of News and Weather on Ideas of Working Beyond. I am weathercaster Austin Greenfield, alongside newscaster Jim Masters. 
Good to see you, Austin. Thank you. In the greater Danbury area, according to the News Times, to some residents of the Shepherd Hill condominiums, Edward E. Lane was a friend. They invited into parties and asked to watch their pets as they went on vacation. But after police found nearly $10,000 worth of stolen jewelry in Lane's car following a burglary at the 140-unit complex in January, the same residents began looking for watches, rings, bracelets, and other small valuables they thought had been misplaced in their homes and started to suspect there might be another side to the man they knew as Eddie. As word of his arrest for the Fernandez burglary spread, other alleged victims started to compare notes. Lane, who is free on $25,000 bond, is scheduled to appear Tuesday in Danbury Superior Court on multiple accounts of burglary and larceny. Total value of the jewelry, coins, and other stolen items was estimated at more than $20,000, according to court documents. Lane told police he began stealing after being out of a job for more than one year. His wife is working, but the couple has a two-year-old child and are falling behind on their bills, according to the affidavit. Danbury High, Chip Silvestri wrestled with the idea of leaving Danbury High School. The athletic director has announced late Tuesday that he has pinned down his decision. Silvestrini uh, officially informed Danbury Superintendent Sal Pascarella of his resignation. At the same time, he accepted the athletic director position for the public schools in White Plains, New York. He said he didn't want to leave, but he was asked to apply before he knew it, he got the job. Silvestri replaced Joe Nordho in 2001, and he departs after eight years in charge of the Hatters Athletic Department. And Phoenix Mercury star Diana Taurasi, formerly, of course, of the UConn women's basketball team, faces three drunken driving-related charges, including extreme DUI for a July 2nd incident in which she also is cited for speeding. A Phoenix police report released Tuesday that uh, Taurasi's blood alcohol level was 0.17% or more than twice the Arizona legal limit of 0.08%. The 27-year-old guard was cited hours after she scored 22 points in the Mercury's 93-81 victory over the Seattle Storm. She has pled not guilty to the DUI charges and says she's not responsible for the citing citation. Her next scheduled court date is July 22nd. Uh, that is amazing, Austin, huh? Uh, you, you just never know. Some interesting stories in the greater Danbury area. How does the weather look? It looks like we had a nice little stretch of some, some warm weather, a little sprinkle here or there, but not a lot of rain. We got not rain coming up? Not a lot of rain, but uh, some rain coming up for tomorrow night into Saturday. And then our only dry day officially will be Sunday, where no chance of showers will be uh, coming. But uh, chance of showers next week as well. Details in the forecast for tonight, uh, showers and uh, thunderstorms for uh, tonight, early, ending early before the midnight hour, and then tomorrow, a chance of showers and thunderstorms again. We'll see our warmest day of the season, one of the warmest days, highs of 85, and then uh, Friday night, showers and thunderstorms likely, mainly after the midnight hour. Saturday, a chance of showers and thunderstorms. Sunday, a nice day, mostly sunny with highs around 80, and then uh, Monday, Mostly sunny highs around 80. Then Tuesday through Friday, chance of showers with highs around 80. Very good. So not bad. Good weather coming throughout the area. Yeah. Thanks, Austin. Well, that is our report for news and weather for Comcast Cable Channel 23. For Austin Greenfield, I'm Jim Masters. Stay tuned for more of Ideas at Work and Beyond with Marty Heiser coming right up. Thanks for joining us. So ideas of work and beyond. We are going to go from a local issue, that of a water tank or a water tower, I guess it all depends on your perspective, to a national issue, and that is the Senate seat held by Senator Christopher Dodd. Um, let me just read from this editorial by Chris Powell. It talks about Dodd. He says, his latest, uh, Dodd's latest will come mostly from special interest, talking about his uh, fundraising. His money comes from special interests, 
particularly from financial and medical interests seeking influence on Dodd's, on Dodd's work as chairman of the state banking committee and coordinator of medical insurance legislation. Dodd's milking of this interest to finance not just his past Senate campaign, but also his vanity campaign for president last year is a big reason for his sharp decline in public esteem. Now, I share this with my esteemed fellow uh, host here, uh, um, Al Robinson, and he seems to scoff at that. He seems to feel as if Dodd has absolutely nothing to worry about. Rob Simmons is just a Johnny come lately, and the fact that he raised seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars in this last uh, filing uh, does not frighten him at all. Chris Powell says that state Democrats are concerned about Rob Simmons, which is the right. Should well, should Senator Dodd be hearing some footsteps? Well. What I would say is, um, this is something that I, I said on another show called Progressive Soup when they talked about citizen journalism. And one of the questions that was posed towards me was, you know, how does your readership can rely upon the information that you are providing them? Mm -hmm. And I said to them, I'm like, I said, look, blogs are just like the mainstream media. If, for instance, you watch Fox News, you should know that you're watching Fox News that will put a particular type of spin on any type of subject. Mm -hmm. Just like if you say, MSN. CNN, oh, no, no. CBS, oh, 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 ABC, oh, no, 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 no. NBC. Let's, let's if you far. watch let's any of those state-run media, let's say, let's say MSNBC. I think that's a fair analogy. Oh, okay. Yeah. You're so, way out on a limb so there. So you're, you're giving a certain type of spin on that. So it you really think? depends. It really depends on your source, and you have to know where you're getting your information from. Chris Powell, for instance, is a. First of all, you're reading from an opinion piece. Right. This is in this is in the opinion piece published in the Danbury News Times. Uh, Chris Powell is the managing editor for the Journal Enquirer, a very conservative, right wing columnist. So you're going to get a particular type of spin from Chris Powell. Anybody who knows about the FOI case that was done down in New Haven with the uh, ID program and illegal immigrants know that Chris Powell was one of the persons who wanted to have the information from the um, ID disclosed to the public so people would know who would sign up on this list. Um, that's another subject altogether, but I'm mm -hmm. just saying Chris Powell is very, very far to the right, so you have to understand the information you're getting from. Um, Ted Mann, for instance, on the other side, is a re hardcore political reporter, one of the most well-respected reporters in terms of politics in the state of Connecticut, mm -hmm. works for the New London Day, which is Mr. Simmons' congressional district in the second. Mm -hmm. And he talked about Rod Simmons' numbers, and I know people like, talk, like to talk about, well, Chris Dodd received all this money from PACs and all this blah, 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 nonsense, in my opinion. So he didn't receive money from PACs? Uh, everybody receives money from PACs. Mm -hmm. I don't care who your political affiliation is. And by, for, for instance, Rob Simmons is consider, was considered the PAC man when he was a congressman. Mm -hmm. all right, from, from 2002, 4, and 06, he received more money from PACs than individual donations, mm -hmm. and that's based upon does, does it concern you at all that, that Chris Dodd is receiving money from financial interests in the banking community that have business before his committee, and that some have said uh, help to contribute to the economic meltdown well, that we just I, had? I, I think it goes both ways. Again, if you look at no, the No, no, does that concern you? I, I don't know if it concerns me as much as looking at the man's record and seeing what he's doing presently okay. in, 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 in Congress right now in terms of legislation, whether it's the credit card act that he just passed, health care. Um, um, I have now. two other questions along Chris. Does it concern you that he was uh, absent from the state of Connecticut put his children in a school system in Iowa in what, uh, you know, you say it's a, a bias piece, but right. they called a vanity campaign for president. Does that concern you at all? I have one other no, 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 concern. On I want to try to keep on campaign, but we can talk okay. about this for a quick second. Um, I think the president of the United States right now was a senator from the state of Illinois who took a lot of time out of his time, out of being with the state of Illinois right. to campaign. John McCain, who was the Republican nominee for president, was right. a state senator from, I mean, a U.S. senator from the state of Arizona, who spent over a year, maybe a year and a half, campaigning. Right. So, I mean, this this type of stuff. If, if the only one that could run for public office has to be unemployed, it would be a pretty small group of people. Yeah, there you go. All right. <laughs> but uh, we, try we, again. Sorry, go ahead. Okay, so look, Ted Mann from the New London Day said this here. Like, uh, first of all. 
Rob Simmons received $750,000 in the second quarter. Uh -huh. But if you look at that there, it includes a $20,000 loan to his campaign that Simmons gave to himself, also $112,000 in unpaid debts, which works out to be about 15% of his total take. Uh -huh. uh, if you subtract all that stuff from his cash on hand, he gets something like $448,000, which is almost on the level of Tom Foley. It's an old trick to hold off your debts until like the third quarter to show that you have a higher number. It's an old, one of those tricks that you have. Caller, you're on the air. Yeah, first thing, I think we should invade Danbury about this water issue and then tie up the mayor and throw him in the river. Now, hold on, there's a point. Now, do you think that, that uh, right what, what would, it, would it be the police force or the fire force that would actually do the invasion? I don't know. I'm not. Caller, what are your thoughts? I think, I think also, I think uh, the, the, t the citizens really should pick up their pitchforks and run them out. We need water. Secondly, <laughs> I think I, he's a Bethel uh, resident. This dot has Bethel. to go. This dot has done nothing for the middle class. Nothing except created some sort of law where the credit card companies have to tell you before your rates go up. That's nice. And he's done nothing. He has to go. He's in bed with this Goldman Sachs, with this, with this biggest, biggest hoax ever pulled on mankind with this, uh, this, uh, the, the, uh, the global warming crap, the tax and spent tax, the, the cap and warming. trade. Is that what you're talking about? No, cap, and no, trade? No, no. cap and trade. Cap and trade. Cap and trade. I think they're calling me cap and trade. Pulled on the country, the man. Trade, this guy Dodd has trade. to go. I'll see you. Thank you. Bye bye. Right. Thank you very much. That's the cap and okay. trade. That's. Uh, that uh, Miss Palin and John McCain also supported. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, I'll give you the information. Look, I'll make you a YouTube sensation. I'll, I'll splice this all together for you so you can watch it. That'll be good. Okay. YouTube hits for ideas of work and beyond are a little anemic. So any <laughs> anything that would uh, spice that up would be would be good. Yeah, um, Caller, you're on the air. Caller, are you there? Yes, I am. This is your big moment. Please share with us your insight. Do you think Bethel should invade Danbury so as to put up this water tower? No, I do not. Thank you. Then give us a more reasonable comment, if you would. Well, I didn't call about that. I called, talked about Senator Dodd. What are your thoughts on the good senator? I called his office the other day. How'd that work out? Well, I called him because this credit card bill that he passed doesn't take effect until next February. In the meantime, all these credit card companies, every time you get your bill, they're raising the rates. I hear you. No one is doing anything, and if Senator Dodd really cared about people, this bill would have got, taken effect immediately. Well, one of the things that you have to understand about that particular thing is that Senator Dodd actually wanted it to happen immediately. There was pushback from members on the Congress to not have that happen. Uh, so he would have lost a lot of, well, he wouldn't have lost, lost a lot of support. The bill itself would have lost a lot of support. So it's not necessarily Senator Dodd. I mean, he's one member of a big Congress. We were talking mm -hmm. about the House of Representatives in the Senate. But um, he did work very hard to try to get that thing to go in immediately. In fact, that was one of the questions I asked him when I interviewed him a couple of months ago, because I was also concerned about this as somebody who was a college student who was just bombarded with uh -huh. presentations on credit cards. Yeah, yep. you have been pre-approved, $50,000, oh, I mean, sign look, here. I, I had 12 cards when I was in college. It really hurt me financially, and it hurt my credit rating for a number of years. Mm -hmm. um, so I wish I would have had a, this, this bill here in existence when I was in college. Um, yeah, d d look, there's, there's, there, there's give and take and all types of stuff like that. You know, you, you, you can't get everything at 100%. Uh, and he did work, as well as a lot of other people who really supported this bill, to get this thing in immediately. But I do tell you, there are some good things about this bill. For instance, um, you, you understand that with this bill, the credit card companies will no longer be able to increase your, credit, uh, your interest rate retroactively. Which means that, let's say you have a thousand dollar balance on your bill, right. and they increase the interest and you're one, rate, they you're can't hit you with the, they can't put that interest on your thousand yeah. dollar bill. And that's, that's a huge thing right there. Caller, thanks a lot for calling. Appreciate it. Um, yeah, I think uh, I mean, what the credit card companies are doing. I mean, I have a I have a Chase credit card, and I want I want to call them out a little bit. This is Chase credit card. These people right here, if we can focus in on this, uh, uh, they they really got my goat because you know basically we never miss a payment, always pay your bill on time. They lower your credit uh, um, like from fifteen thousand to nine thousand for whatever reason. So be it. And then they charge you because they say you charge over your rate, and they don't even tell you that they lowered it. Right. And so once you charge over your rate, they can take it from the teaser rate of like two point nine percent up to thirty percent. Thirty percent. Right. What are you kidding me? Uh, so maybe Dodd did a good thing. Uh, and also, uh, with, uh, I, I remember when I went to school, 
I remember the, the number that drove people nuts was like 19.8 percent. Yeah. That was that was considered crazy back 30, then. 30 30 percent. I mean, was, Tony Soprano's got nothing on uh, on these credit card companies. You should all be ashamed of yourself. But that said, I don't take uh, Senator Dodd off the hook because basically I feel like in, in a lot of ways he was in bed with some of these banks. Well, Caller, you're on the air. Marty, that's another point. You can't just ditch your credit card when it goes from the teaser rate to the extortion rate at 30 percent because that affects your credit risk score if you were to cancel the card and take another card, as, as, uh, from what I've been told from my banker friends. <laughs> well, I mean, the bill to help consumers really didn't do a hell of a lot. I mean, I would like to uh, ditch the card after the teaser rate, and then my uh, accountant friend said, no, it doesn't work that way because uh, it's going to hurt, you, hurt your credit risk score if you keep on doing that. So I never thought of it, and I hope the listeners uh, look into that also. Thank yeah, you. the teaser rates the teaser are rate bad, rate. but I mean, the fact of the matter is, if you're late one day in paying it, it goes from the teaser rate up to 30%, then, then you're just stuck. And it's unfair. I love these new commercials that they have where they, you know, the guy comes out and hands a little kid a car and a p kid plays with the car, then he takes it and hands him a paper card. You seen these ads on TV? Right, I, it's it was great. The little kid's like, hey, what the heck? I identify with that chubby little kid. To these banks, I'm saying, like, what the heck is going on here? You know, I mean, we pay our bills. You make your money on your interest. Now, what do you want to, you know, just suck our blood on top of everything else? Chase Bank. That's the ones that have got my goat for tonight. And they should Marty and Al, I thought the hottest place in hell was reserved for lawyers. I think the second place in hell is reserved for lawyers after these financiers. <laughs> well, it could be. It could be. Thanks a lot. <laughs> I, I disagree with Bethel invading Danbury, but good thought. Uh, uh, I from Bethel or something else, man. I'll tell you, they want their water, but uh, I, I have it on a high level from the, uh, the mayor's office that there are some quality of life issues that, uh, that they're dealing with, and, and I think well, that, I, you know... They, the, on the Danbury side, that you know, the mayor is like going to defend the registered voters in Danbury as opposed to the concerned, well, water-starved citizens of Bethel. I, I, again, it's just one of these issues, I, and I'm happy I brought it on the show today because it, 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 these are the type of things that just drive people crazy. These little developmental things. Yeah. It's like it's either this one day or, in the case of Ridgefield, I remember when they had a restaurant um, where Union Savings Bank is at now. What was the name of that little restaurant that was there for a, for a small bit? It was a burger joint. I don't know. Duchess? It was Duchess. Duchess. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm the sorry, Duchess. from the people in Ridgefield, they placed that in there. Well, they got the thing out of there real quick. Just think of the litter. I mean, next <laughs> thing, there'll be a McDonald's there. That'd be crazy. <laughs> Caller, you're on the air. How are you this evening? Good. Thanks so much for calling. What's your thought? Well, I got a little thought on the water tower. On the what? Uh, on the water tower. Water tower, yeah. What are your thoughts? Good idea, bad idea? I got a great idea. All right. Well, I got a nice piece of property up on 37 Shelly Road. Wait, you have this property? No, I know it. It's a nice piece of property on 37 Shelly Road. Oh, okay. High elevation. It's totally out of the way. No neighbors. You can put your water tower up there, and you can service the whole town of, of Bethel. Okay, what is your relation to the property at 37 Shelly Road? I'm a neighbor. Oh, you're a neighbor, so you'd like to sell your neighbor's property and put a water tower. Uh, I just think it'd be a good place for it. It's a good elevation, and they, they have fires up there once in a while, so it'd be a good location for you it. Know, this it. is this is democracy. Yeah. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. We got to get the first selectman uh, back on because apparently 37 Shelby Road would be the place to put this water See, tower. See, it's because of this show we it's solve all thing. problems. I think we should hug and say kumbaya. Oh my! All right, um, all right. So you really think Dodd's got nothing to? worry about. I, I didn't say He's fat, happy, you, you, confident. You, you don't think this pushback him and Barney Franks and these banking committees and everyone's 401k is going down. You don't think someone wants someone's head and he's the next I, I, there, guy there, up there's, for election. There's, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of rhetoric that's being said about Barney Frank and Chris Dodd without examining What are you that. talking about rhetoric? Uh, it's a lot of rhetoric. You know, when, when did Chris Dodd take over? And when, did the, when, when, did the, when did the Democrats take over the majority for the Senate? It was January 2007. This whole thing that's been going on with the banking industry and the deregulation and all the stuff that we have right now that gives us the 30% interest rate on these credit cards that's driving you nuts happened well before 2007, my mm -hmm. friend. It happened way back during so the days of, like, you know, Phil Graham and the deregulation. Bush is to blame. 
They say Bush is the point. It's got to be. There's got to be a Republican. No, 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 no. If something no, bad's no, no. happened, there has to be a Republican. I, there the a lot of stuff happened under the Clinton administration, but during the Clinton administration, the Republicans did have control of Congress during that time. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you, Phil Graham, deregulation Enron, you go back to that time where you started deregulating okay. the banks to let a lot of this stuff I, I can. I can what, what is it? Maxine Waters, is that, uh, she was on that banking committee, too? That's the. Uh, the uh, is that, is that uh, when the Republican was the chairman of that banking committee? That may be. I can and, and, I can show you videotape. Like if sign. you have a 12 year old at home, get them to go on YouTube and find Maxine Waters Banking Commission, and you'll see videotape of when the Bush administration set up their auditors and said what's going on at Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac is is wrong and we need to be addressed. And Barney Frank mm -hmm. and Maxine Waters shouted that guy down mm -hmm. and said, "How dare you say that the emperor." has no clothes. Everything's fine. Okay. What are you talking about? Iceberg, what iceberg? Full speed ahead. And they took us on USS Titanic and they took this they economy the, right the, down the, the tubes. The minorities on the banking committee during that time period Look, did it. you're the guy who's also running videotapes at all these in, I, inane I'll, uh, political I'll, meetings. I'll whip it all up for you, you. YouTube it. See what they said. Yeah. And they said the only problem that these banks have is that you people are questioning it. Everything's fine. People are getting mortgages. Everything's fine. Iceberg, what iceberg? You give me a week, I'll whip it up for you, I'll make you famous, I'll take what you just said right here and, yeah. and, and segue right into that video footage and show exactly what happened. Okay. I think it's a little different. Than we are on live television, ahead. this is being recorded, I, I'd like to see that and also why don't oh, you, you tell for it. our viewing audience, we had a bet about the uh, uh, the, your, the your governor man, of South your Carolina. Man. That's your man. I forget, he was Republican, he's a man <laughs> going through some <laughs> transitions, <laughs> he had some issues in <laughs> Argentina. <laughs> He had issues. He's gone again. He, they, they lost he him was, again. He was Where looking for he? love and all. I think he was on the uh, Appalachian Trail. Yeah, we had okay. a bet that he would stay in office, and he did. Oh, yeah, here we go. <laughs> and don't tell me about the caribou, although gas is. Oh, right my alone. goodness. It's just all right, we've gone up far afield. So but, Dodd is going to survive or not? Well, let's just put it like this. Dodd, Dodd raked in 1.2 mil. Uh, but I want to get off of that. I think, I think what I tried to do when Rob Simmons was here was just talk about other Republicans that are in the race because, look, yeah. you got Tom Foley. Look, say what you, say what you want to say about the guy. He raised $530,000 in 26 days. Didn't he write a check for 530 of that? <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, he shook the, he, he's a big-time fundraiser for the Bush administration. Uh -huh. He shook the money tree, and he got that money in 26 days where Rob Simmons had full three, three full months to raise... Uh -huh his money in which, you know, like I said again, there's some funny stuff going on there. Um, Peter Schiff, uh, he's one of these guys from Ron Paul. He can do one of these money bombs and make a lot of cash real quick. Um, you got the state senator, Sam Kellagiri. He's a guy out of Waterbury? Guy out of Waterbury. He, he, a former he, guest on this show, Dick Foley, thinks he has the best chance. I think he, hey, look, he, out of all the Republicans I see here, I think that guy's got a good shot. He raised about a buck twenty-five. I know everybody wants to take a shot at Chris Dodd, but you got four horses in this race that, that made money in this, in, in current, uh, this current uh, climate. Mm -hmm. You're going to have a bloodbath between four Republicans pretty soon. And I, saw, and I saw when Foley put out his numbers, Rob Simmons came right back immediately with an email mm -hmm. trying to dis, dis Foley's numbers. It's, right, it's going to be a bloodbath between those I mean, two look, guys. This is how our system works. Uh, of course, the only one who's going to run on the Democratic side is, is uh, Senator Dodd. A good, healthy primary tends to energize the party, and I think that Republicans recognize we have a chance to knock off a Democratic senator, right. and I think they will unify the party under Chris Healy, our beloved uh, chairman of the Republican Party, yes. and I think we will, field, we'll, we will field a, a impressive candidate, and I think we got a ch good chance, because there's a lot of anger out there. People are saying, hey, stuff is broken, and it's not working, and, and, and and Dodd with his, you know, sweetheart deal on his personal mortgages, let alone a cottage in Ireland. Google that, see what comes up. Uh, I think he's uh, he's ripe, and he could uh, it could be time for him to move on. We'll see what happens. I, I think it has a lot to do with the economy and, and, and the direction of the Obama administration. If the economy comes back, if we get a rebound, and more importantly, if we start getting jobs instead of losing jobs, I think it's almost a done deal. Uh, I think it all comes down to what's happening in people's pocketbooks. It's and the that, economy that, stupid. It's the economy stupid, and I think that's more important than anything else right now. All right. Well, I just want to thank Al Robinson for being on the show again. His blog 
And I don't think Mayor Bowden likes your blog. Doesn't but his blog, blog no, because I, you, you're very mean spirited when it comes to it. I've been oh, on I your thought, blog. I Gina you catch people site. in little videotapes and you run a loop and you make them look silly, and it's just not fair. Well, would Gene was standing next to a skinhead, uh, that wasn't my fault. Okay, uh, Hat City blog. That's uh, Al Robinson. And uh, four thanks, years th Sunday. Four years th on th Sunday. Th thanks for joining us. Also. Uh, spotlight on Tuesday nights on this uh, program, 9 p.m., 40th anniversary of the landing on the moon. Spotlight on by uh, Big Bob. Uh, that's his show. It's a great show. 9 p.m. on Channel 23. Thanks for joining us. Join us again next week when we're going to have, I'm not really sure. We sort of make this up as we go along. Uh, the following two weeks, I'm going to be out of town, but I'm getting a camera and I'm going to shoot some video. And then in oh, about... Boy. August 20th, we have this guy Peter Wolfgang coming in, and that ought to be an interesting show. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time on Ideas at Work and Beyond. Good night.